April 12, 1961, morning. At the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the middle of the Kazakh steppe, a 27-year-old Soviet naval lieutenant Yuri Gagarin is about to embark on a journey that will go down in history. He is to be the first man to look into space. From today's perspective, it doesn't look like a difficult mission. The plan is for Gagarin to orbit the Earth just once and then return. But things were different 60 years ago. The race between the two superpowers, the Soviet Union and the United States, to conquer space had only begun and the Soviets were surprisingly ahead. They sent the first satellite into space, Sputnik. They sent the first animal, the dog Laika. They were the ones who landed the Luna probe on the moon. And a year ago, they were the first to bring two more dogs, Belka and Strelka, not only into orbit, but alive back to Earth. So now there's just one final step, to do the same with a man. Yuri Gagarin was born in 1934 in the village of Klushino. His father was a carpenter, his mother a milkmaid. His parents sent him to apprenticeship, he became a foundryman. And because he was one of the best pupils, they offered him the opportunity to study at the industrial school in Saratov. During high school he played a lot of sports, and at 161 centimeters tall, he was surprisingly good at basketball. But what he loved the most was going into a local aero club. And that's where his dream of becoming a fighter pilot was born. He passed the difficult entrance exams to the military aviation school in Orenburg. It was there during his studies at a party organized by the school that he met Valentina Goryacheva, a nurse who worked in the laboratory of the Space Mission Control Center. A year and a half later, they were married, and the following year, their first daughter, Yelena, was born. Gagarin had finished his studies by then and moved with his family beyond the Arctic Circle to the city of Murmansk, where he served as a lieutenant in the Soviet Naval Air Force. And it was there where he learned about the selection process for the newly formed spaceflight program. The ideal candidate was to be a fighter pilot between 25 and 30 years old, with a maximum height of 170 centimeters and a weight of up to 70 kilograms. Gagarin was 25 at the time, weighed 65 kilos, and was 161 centimeters tall. After a series of elimination rounds with over 3,000 candidates, he got into the top six. put them through rigorous training. Overload on a 12G centrifuge, a two-hour stay in a thermal chamber heated to 70 degrees, 15 days of isolation in a miniature room. A stay in a barrow chamber where the air pressure was equivalent to being on a mountain twice the height of Mount Everest. They practiced weightlessness during flights in a fighter jet. And in all this, a team of doctors monitored their physical and mental adaptability. At the end of the training, all six men were officially designated as astronauts, and five of them looked into space sooner or later. But now, it was a matter of picking the first one. Of the original six, these three remained in January, 61. Yuri Gagarin, German Titov, and Grigory Nelyubov. They were so evenly matched that the committee delayed the final selection for another quarter of a year. The final decision was not made until four days before launch. Proletarian origin, appearance, and even name played a role. Yuri sounded a lot better than a named German, and when Gagarin's boyish grin and optimistic nature were added to the mix, it was a clear win. It's D-Day, 10 minutes to 7 in the morning. Yuri Gagarin and his stand-in, German Titov, board the bus in their spacesuits as it heads for the pad. The Vostok rocket, and translated as AIST, is ready. 
as the two cosmonauts approach it. Gagarin disengages from his colleague. Only he, accompanied by his staff, continues to the cabin, which is 38 meters high. On the way up, he says, he briefly feels panic. Moments later, he sits down in the round cabin, which is only two and a half meters in diameter. The first time, the technician fails to close the hatch. It's leaking. Inside, Gagarin whistles to himself, talking on the radio to the rocket's chief designer, Sergei Korolyov. Nearly two hours later, at nine hours and seven minutes, all is well, and the engines finally roar to full throttle. The flight will eventually take 108 minutes. At the 57th minute, Vostok will reach a maximum altitude of 327 kilometers, roughly 100 more than originally planned. Gagarin is not involved in the control of the ship. Everything is automated. However, the smooth flight turns into drama when the descent begins. The instrument section will not be separated from the cabin as planned. The two sections will remain connected by cable. It'll cause the ship to rotate violently. After 10 long minutes, when Gagarin begins to lose consciousness, the cable finally burns out in the atmosphere and the rotation stops. When Vostok descends to an altitude of 7 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, Gagarin ejects and parachutes to the ground. Complications, however, caused a different descent path. Therefore, Gagarin will not land in the planned area, but almost 3,000 kilometers away in the Saratov region. The first people who see him in the field near a village are startled by a strange man in a spacesuit standing next to an even stranger machine. But Gagarin's expression in the first photographs says it all. Exhaustion, relief, and happiness. April 12, 1000. 961 divided Yuri Gagarin's life into two parts. An unknown military aviator became the most popular man on the planet. He was forbidden to fly, he was now too valuable for that. He was only allowed aboard planes as a passenger when visiting countries around the world. He became the property of the Soviet people, an export item whose job was to smile and talk. Interestingly, his very first foreign trip was to Prague. However, over time, Yuri began to hate his new role. He became ill, drank quite a lot, got fat. He longed to fly again and return to space. He was eventually allowed to fly, but his dream of space never came true. On March 27, 1968, at 10 hours and 19 minutes, Yuri Gagarin, together with his instructor Vladimir Serjogin, took off on a MiG-15 for a training flight. 22 minutes later, the machine crashed for reasons still unknown. Both pilots were dead at the scene. Investigators identified Gagarin only by his watch, teeth and scraps of overalls. There are many theories about what exactly happened during their flight. There is talk of a loss of orientation, an altimeter error, a crash into a weather balloon or turbulence caused by another plane. There are also various conspiracy theories. The funeral of Yuri Gagarin took place three days later and was attended by 40,000 people. The cosmonaut number one was buried in a place of honor at the Kremlin Wall in Moscow, among the most important people of the Soviet Union. He was only 34 years old, and he was mourned not only by the people of his native country, but without question, by the whole world.